we have to thank Gary Van den Bush for setting this up. This is quite an achievement. Yes, I'm very excited. You know, this is great. We we just kind of been have been injected into the UK. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> like we're transported from another universe and just dropped. <laughs> right. Well, I think from what I said to Gary earlier on uh, on Facebook, this is kind of destiny because I've just been searching my download files and I've got maybe half a dozen tracks of you on file that I've received over over the last year, and I've I've always thought I must play this lady's music. And then when Gary sent the tracks at the weekend, uh, this is more in the style that I'd be happier playing. Uh, I've just, some of your earlier style is kind of more uh, rock soul to my ears. It's very energetic, but you seem to have taken a slightly different direction with the new single. Was that a conscious move? You know, I, I think any artist uh, evolves and, and each work is its own creation. And I think we've definitely been heading towards this direction. Yeah. And, and the, the true voice uh, of our music, I think with our composition skills and our recording skills getting better, is just transforming into what it's supposed to be. Okay. And I noticed from my other screen here, I've somehow missed out on five of your albums. <laughs> <laughs> we have, yeah, we have four. We have four. And, um, you know, well, I've missed out on all of you for so long. So we have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> we do indeed. And that, that'll start this weekend. I, I, I may not get this edited down in time for broadcast this week, but as I think I said in the email, it'll be next week. So I've got two shows. I've got a three hour show on a Thursday night and the two hours on solar on a Sunday morning. So my target is to edit down to broadcast first on solar because then we've got a complete soul audience to broadcast to who may not yet know Laura Rain and that's their great loss. Well, you know, there's a timing for everything. And, and right now I feel that the universe is, is uh, bringing a lot of people together um, that I normally wouldn't have known. And it's just all meant to be. So I feel very good about this. <laughs> all it, this new... Sure. People. Yeah, it's funny how the, the, the circumstances which are preventing you from doing live work, uh, but it, it's kind of uh, diverted people's time and energy into a different medium of communication, such as Zoom sessions and uh, we live web sessions, uh, which kind of take you more into somebody's living room rather than them being in your dance hall. And it adds a different perspective, does it not, to them appreciating you? It does. Well, one of the reasons why we started the singles series, our Soul Journey single series back in August was for that very reason. First of all, we're, we're transforming as writers and performers and we cannot perform on the stage. And we are looking to maintain our, our, our grassroots following and also to get, get new listeners while they're sitting at home in quarantine or whatever to uh, find our music. So we did accomplish all of that with these singles uh, tremendously. Some things didn't work out as well, but for the most part, we achieved all of our goals for the year and more. So reaching out to people, connecting with people, being able to affect people in a positive way with our music is really, really important. So it, of course, it's not the intensity of a live show. Even when we do live streams, you can't get that feeling of being able to reach out and and hug your fans but you do the best you can and it's better than not being present at all so when we come back to the stage hopefully you know we will have more fans and people will be very excited to uh, see some live music sure and i think they've been appreciative of the fact that you've taken the time to go online and connect with people rather than sitting back and, and saying oh no it's not working well, you know, it's, I think everybody has had a hard time this year and you have to fight those feelings. What I usually do at a live show um, is I try to approach every person at that show and say, thank you for coming. Thank you for listening to our show because, you know, most people don't know who we are. So every single person is important and we treat them like family. So we try to do that online as well. Every new person that comes along and has seen our video or listened to our music, we, we try to reach out and give the same gratitude, uh, you know, over the internet as we would live in person. 
Sure, yeah. Uh, I see behind you a huge vinyl collection, Laura. <laughs> uh, you've started the same way. Um, behind me, you see a lot of CDs. I can only <laughs> use CDs on radio, but I've got a huge vinyl collection in the other room as well, uh, which has kind of built up the music history for me, as I guess it must have done for you as well. It did. You know, I over this year and a couple interviews I, I have done, I have been remembering my father's music room very fondly and I and I really think that was the first step uh into exposing me to music you know all the records the the reel to reel the big big speakers that people don't have anymore and all <laughs> this and and making music so special and beautiful and just uh that definitely I think was the first thing that that affected me and so these are a combination of my records my husband's records um and, and probably a couple other people's records too <laughs> throughout <laughs> our life. But yes, they're all very special back there. Sure. So you mentioned your father there particularly, was it his influence that got you down the road of rhythm and blues or how did you find out about the music? No, you know, um, my father only listened to classical music. Oh, okay. And so I was, when my father was home, you know, his music room, it was classical music, opera, um, some jazz, but, but mostly that, which was, you know, wonderful to, to be brought up in that environment. When he was at work or I was with my mother, we listened to funk and soul music. It was Donna Summer, uh, Charlie Wilson, you know, Rick James, you know, the jams yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dance in the house, you know, but that was not allowed when my dad was home, but you know, the, those experiences, all of that music has, has shaped me for sure. <laughs> Well, and that comes through in what you're actually singing. Uh, from what I've heard over the last uh, half a dozen tracks I've been playing, uh, I can hear Rick James in your music. I can hear Charlie <laughs> Wilson. I can hear Laura Rain particularly, though, in the music. You, you've got your own style, haven't you? I do. You know, I have always been uh, playing my own beat, I can say that. And so throughout the years of being a singer in various different bands and cover bands and you know this nobody wants to hire the singer that wants to sound like themselves but uh i ha i have always been true to myself and i think the more that i stay true to myself the more my voice gets heard yeah so which you mentioned like rick jones and company there are there any girl singers from detroit that you kind of uh had in your head for a century a youngster oh yeah well you know uh, oddly enough you know motown really was not played in, in in the house no so the motown music came later when i was you know sneaking into bars and in detroit and singing and you know where i really got my edu music education so of course aretha franklin you know when i when i found her i think i was probably 14 15 and you know then one album after another you digest digest you know i, yeah. I thought that i had found the holy grail with her but she was not my first Im influence but of course a major detroit influence for sure yeah did you come across willie john in your music like bringing as well another detroit man willie john so my husband would have more music by willie john that that really would not have been someone that i listened to um john lee hooker did have some detroit roots yeah you know we actually did a thing with um john was in the fall his concert of colors and it was a tribute to john lee hooker so he's always kind of been a mainstay in, in the detroit blues scene indeed and his his stomping boogie comes across in your music as well he's very much <laughs> a powerhouse performer yeah <laughs> uh, but, uh, but now you've got the subtlety of your new tracks of particularly uh, if i can't have you is is kind of a a, a nice uh not lilting necessarily but it's easy on the ear it's a comfortable song to listen to it's not a dance tune but it's a listen tune yes and you know uh, i maybe the type of singer i am and the type of performer um easy on the ears maybe isn't the first thing that would come to mind i'm more of a powerhouse go for the throat um kind of singer um but that song just when i wrote it i i just kind of pictured this 
Marvin Gaye singing the song, it just felt easy and smooth. And um, it was kind of like a homage to, to 70s soul, but not that retro. It had a modern twist. Yeah. So I really enjoy that song. And, and, and that really was a standout to us. I was actually surprised with Closer to the Wind, the response with that, because If I Can't Have You was really the song we thought that was going to take it over the edge. It actually did. It opened many doors for us. So yeah. they're both pretty prominent in our in our new listeners. Well, the, those two songs will feature certainly at the beginning of my show on Sunday morning, because I start out in a kind of mellower groove and build, but and they are just made for that particular situation, Laura, which is yeah. a, a good introduction to people. So then, then they can... Uh, wean themselves onto the harder side of Laura a little later. <laughs> <laughs> what do you sure, that's to? a good way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you listen to to relax then, Laura? Oh, you know, um, I have my old favorites. I, I, I have been starting to listen to a lot of these soul artists um, that I've been you know, recently acquainted with from the charts and other DJs playlists. So I'm yeah. kind of diving into their music because I feel like there's this whole world I didn't know about that was alive and well, because in the States here, it's, it's very hard to find all these different varieties of soul music. So I guess that's why I'm so stuck in, in certain genre, uh, you know, genres and decades um, because I listen to the music that I love, you yeah. know, um, it, Al, Al Green, you know, it is a good one to relax to, I, I would say for sure, you know, yes. um, Michelle and Dege Ocello is another good, <laughs> good one to relax, get, um, you know, there's, there's so many great, great artists. Um, yeah. It's, it's just amazing. You know, Shaka Khan is my all time favorite. I can listen to her day and night, 24 seven, I, I think Patti LaBelle rings in at close number two yeah. <laughs> so. uh, Pat, patty is a, a great singer but somehow she never quite made it in the uk and europe market she's superb song superb range but she fell off the side of the of the packet when it came to the british market nobody knows her very much you know i don't know i wasn't as much of a hardcore fan of hers until i saw her live yeah then when i saw her live she really did it for me and then other artists were the opposite when i saw them live i was like what? you know some people yeah. just have their stronger attributes but she really knocked it out of the park i don't even think her recording showcased the dynamic uh performer that she is live i think you're right there because that comes over you you, you can hear the the uh, the sound being boxed in on record whereas when she's on stage she'll fill the auditorium no doubt it's amazing yes yeah as with Gladys Knight, there's another another lady there who who has a, a a better performing voice, and she does she does very well on record. But you don't get the full range of her style and capacity on on record. I don't. Think. Yes. But Shaka Khan is one who does both. I think uh, the record is gritty. Does... Yes, you know she does she does both, and you know a lot of times you know she is honest about her performance i've seen her forget her words i'm like well that's relatable <laughs> <laughs> i do that she uh she's an impro improvisational singer and and i am i write like that and i do perform like that as well so there's a lot of things that i, I really relate to her uh in performing and recording so i just love her to death i love her latest music she's one of my favorites but you mentioned just now the fact that uh, in, in some ways that the, the European or the British radio market and that we Brits who have taken soul on board these past 50 odd years have probably added a dimension to soul appreciation that perhaps wasn't evident for US radio in, over the years. Yes, you know, I don't know if it's, I think part of it has to do with radio and maybe certain tastes take over, you know. Um, I always felt like um, it was more of a underground, undercurrent 
uh, music in the States, which makes no sense. You know, yeah. maybe you're never a hero until you go somewhere else. So U.S. <laughs> soul music is, is, you know, king over in the U.K. Yeah. Um, it, that quite, you know, possibly could be because the, the artists, there's just so many great artists. And there were some that I, I did follow here, but then... I didn't even realize how large their their presence uh, in the UK was. So it's it's astounding. You know, there's there's no rhyme or reason to taste. Sometimes you don't know why someone is popular and someone isn't. I mean, you know, here in in the states, I mean, my husband and I we listen to NPR radio, public radio. We we yeah. support public radio. We donate to public radio, and all these other big channels. You know, they they play. They're from, you know, they play what major, major companies tell them to play. So yeah. who really is is making the choices as far as what's played? I'm not sure. Quite. Yeah. But now now you've moved into the UK uh, niche market, as it were, and you've picked on a great man with Gary Van der Bush to promote you because Gary has his finger on the pulse of what happens here. Uh, so perhaps this is the, another door to open for Laura Lane and the Caesars to actually capture the British market in a, a greater, greater way. Well, you know, I think that um, there's a lot of things that maybe are, are lost here. I think um, people really love and appreciate music in the UK. There are music lovers here, but I, I think people just have more of an affinity for actual records and maybe uh, revel in the music a little bit more. Maybe they, their ears, maybe they l listen be better. Maybe they learn to listen better. Maybe yeah. music wasn't taken out of the schools, you know, when they were a child. Yeah. So um, we certainly hope to expand, uh, you know, our, our visits to the UK. We have been to France um, with the band. We hope to return, you know, we, we go where the music tells us to go. So if, like I said, I, I felt like I was dropped, I was dropped in, I was transported. The universe just dropped me. Here, here I am <laughs> in the UK. All right. Well, yeah. it's time to make some new friends. <laughs> Let's take it away. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you, you've got four albums, historic albums, as it were. Are you presumably planning a new album for the beginning of 2021 or mid 2021? What's happening there? Yes. Well, so closer to the wind, and if I can't have you, LRK Records in the UK will be putting out on 7-inch vinyl. Um, the pre-sale starts in April. Now we are, we are just setting up our recording schedule right now for another batch of tunes. So I would be confident to say there will be an album coming uh, soon. I, I think we're pretty much done with the single series because it did its job. Yeah. We may release one single off the upcoming album to kind of promote. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to be releasing another series of singles at the moment. I think we're going to be releasing something bigger. So that will be coming within the next few months for sure. Okay, well we'll look for I will look forward to that and I shall make the Thank space you. in my schedule for that and hopefully by the time this interview goes out on air, a lot more people will be aware of Laura Lane and the Caesars and your music. Um, we can get the UK market by the throat and say, what have you been missing? <laughs> <laughs> well, what have I been missing? It, go it goes both ways, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, meanwhile, Laura, thanks very much for your time. Uh, I'm going to now spend time editing this and get it out as soon as I can. I'll send you the link via Gary and we'll get the music of Laura Lane and the Caesars to a wider market as soon as we possibly can. Great. Well, thank you. Would you like me to uh, mention the website or where they can hear music? Yeah, Would please you like do. Yeah. Any, yeah. Any, let's give the, the world the chance to actually hear you more and buy your products and your merchandise. So your web addresses and everything, go ahead. Your, your time. Yes. Well, if you'd like to know all of our music, you can listen to all of our music for free, all four albums and our five singles for free on our website, laurarain.net. And we're available on all the streaming platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. We're easy to find on all the social media sites. So uh, you can't not connect with Laura Rain and the Caesars if you like what you hear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have t-shirts and stuff as well, Laura? I do. 
I do, and, and we've been shipping orders to the UK. So <laughs> well, here I come. I'll be online in a minute or two, and I'll <laughs> buy myself a Laura Ryan T-shirt as well. <laughs> you got to show the flag as well as play it. So. You know what? That's that's good, and I think the shipping is so high. I'm going to have to. Hopefully, we'll get a couple shows. You know, our plan is to come over, and I'll bring yeah. a bunch of stuff <laughs> and leave <laughs> it with Liam. You know, from LRK because. That way people can, can get their hands on it. We're going to have a lot of merch to, to bring yeah. over. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see the name of Laura Rain in the UK soul charts, the global soul, soul charts, and we're going to break you big, babe. So there you go. Thank you so much, Clive. It was a pleasure to do this, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. I really appreciate you and, and playing our music and Gary Vanderbush, um helping uh, push our music along to new people. It's really, I, I'm really grateful. Thank you. It's my pleasure to play such good music. Good luck. And we look forward to seeing you in the UK as soon as humanly possible during the course of this year. Thank you. Stay safe. Take care. Stay safe. Likewise. Lovely to meet you. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.